More than 4,000 fans saw the Quakers take a massive step towards safety with a well-earned victory over faltering Oxford. Neil Wainwright and Mark Convery combined to set up defender Ryan Valentine, who blasted his third goal of the season past keeper Andy Woodman. In the second half, Oxford substitute Lee Steele caused Darlington keeper Michael Price problems with a deep cross that was drifting into goal until Price turned acrobatically to tip the ball over the bar. Oxford's Dean Whitehead also failed to find the target with a 10-yard drive before Price had to dive full length to deny Lee Steele again. But it was Darlington's for the taking, and they sealed victory in the 71st minute when Woodman made a complete pig's ear of the deep cross from Craig Little and striker Barry Conlon fired home. Three matches left. David Hodgson and Darlington can see light at the end of the tunnel. Looks well and truly on the cards for Darlington, but the great escape is almost complete after they took a priceless point away at promotion hopefuls Lincoln. Neil Wainwright slotted home from close range to put the Quakers one up. The imps levelled when Michael Price could only push the ball into the path of Francis Green. Great news. Long ago it looked like Darlington would be the ones dropping out of the Football League and possibly dropping out of existence. It's not totally clear who owns the club. It's not totally clear what their stadium is called. But it is clear that Darlington are staying in Division 3 and that's despite losing yesterday. It started with a defeat, and now the first season in the controversial new stadium has finished with one as well. Mid-table Swansea waited until the second half before Paul Connor inflicted the first wound. With Carlisle leading at Brunton Park, Darlington still needed a point to make sure. Barry Conlon set up Danny Graham, and he rounded Roger Freestone to equalise. And the Quakers almost made sure of three points. Danny Graham again but Evergreen Freestone can still perform a decent backflip. Carlisle were eventually doomed, and Darlington's troubled season at home ended with Swansea's winner from Kevin Nugent. The Quakers escape relegation, but what are the club's future? I'm 100% certain that the situation will be resolved. This football club will have a future. Next year it will be here. A lot of the players who are at the club will be here, and some won't be here. We have to build a team that will eventually one day bring sufficient people in to fill these seats around here. I don't think we'll ever get 25,000. But we've got to start finding a team that's going to win week in, week out, win, uh, week in, week out, and, and gain 10,000 fans in here. 10,000 here will be a good atmosphere. At the moment, we've got five. Why have we got five? Because we're in the bottom half of the table. Darlington ended their traumatic Division 3 campaign on a winning note at Scunthorpe. Barry Conlon's glancing header. Will that be his final goal for the Quakers? The sport now, and finally some good news for Darlington, Simon. Yep. Yes, Mike, fingers crossed, it looks like the Quakers will survive. Former chairman and major creditor George Reynolds announced over the weekend that he'd come to an undisclosed settlement with Darlington's new owners. After months of financial uncertainty, it looks like there's light at the end of the tunnel. It's all a bit cloak and dagger, with neither side willing to say much about the deal. But what George Reynolds will say is that after long talks with new owners of the Sterling Consortium, he's now happy to agree to their offer to creditors. His vote in favour of the creditors' voluntary agreement at tomorrow's meeting will help ensure the 75% agreement required. Sterling would then pay off the remaining creditors and liquidation would be avoided. Well, the club's safe now. It's, um, I'm pleased. I, we never wanted the club to close. It would be good for the fans. I don't know how well they'll do. I hope they do. I pray to God everything works out well for them. Uh, I don't think anybody could have done any more than what I'd done. I paid off £5.2 million of the debt and I've built a magnificent stadium, the best stadium in the world for a third division club. Administrator David Field says he doesn't know anything about the agreement and that nothing is in writing, but expects that Mr Reynolds will now accept similar terms to those which the majority of creditors rejected out of hand at last week's meeting. The approval should be given at tomorrow's meeting. It's not to say that people won't be happy with it, and it's not to say that creditors won't vote against it. As long as we get 75% in favour, it will be approved. But any of the creditors that are not happy with it can still appeal. Sounds like possibly good news for Darlington Football Club. Perhaps not so good news if you're a creditor other than the two major creditors. It's certainly better news for the club as a whole than it was this time last week. Uh, as far as creditors are concerned, it's slightly better news, but it's still a very, very small dividend to creditors. Um, compared to how much they're owed, but it's more than they would get if the company shut down and went into liquidation. 
Darlington Football Club can now look forward to their future with some optimism. Good news for them, perhaps not so good news for creditors. Well, it's on to sport now, and there's been drama on and off the pitch at Darlington Football Club this season. Jeff Brown was at the club this morning. How did it go, Jeff? Well, as well as it can do when uh, a lot of people lose a lot of money, Lara, yes. The club's creditors are understood to have received less than a penny in the pound. But the man who was owed the most, former chairman George Reynolds, did reach an agreement which allowed the Sterling Consortium to take over. So Darlington has saved, and what's been a colourful chapter in the history of North East football has come to an end. <laughs> Five years ago this month, he took over the club, took on their debts, took them to Wembley and nearly into oblivion. So is George glad he's finally rid of football? If ever they shot the end that laid the golden egg, I think they've done that. Because realistically, they paid a £5.2 million of the debts. I built them a magnificent stadium. And uh, realistically, I've had very little help from the Northern Echo, the council, the supporters' trust and some of the director stabbed us in the back, so realistically, I'm quite happy about it. I can flush them all out now, can't I? <laughs> Darlington well, planned to ask former Newcastle manager Kenny Dalglish for help once the Sterling Consortium's rescue deal has been sanctioned by the Football League. I hope that Sterling can sit down and, and have a chat with him. I think if somebody like him could come into this football club and gives it a, a bigger profile, look, we've got a great facility. Chairman's talking away behind you there, in all due respect. He built it. It's cost him his fortune, there's no question about that, but we need to try and build in this stadium. So what of George, who could have lost his house if he'd not struck a deal with Sterling at the weekend? Well, you get the feeling we haven't heard the last of him. And I, I never lose. I'm always on the winning side. Despite what people might think, uh, I'll be booming and the only way to win is be successful and I'm on the road to success already. If you look at the situation Last Friday, I was bankrupt on the Friday, there's a millionaire on the Saturday, so it just proves I'm a bloody genius, aren't I? Uh, and the strongest indication yet that Darlington will still be a football league side next season, Ian. It looks like it, Mike, yes. Good news today. It looks almost certain that David Hodgson can plan properly for life in Division 3 now. The ownership of the club will be transferred from former chairman George Reynolds to the Sterling Consortium. The threat of liquidation has gone. Agreement was finally reached at a meeting at the ground today, but not everybody is happy. George Reynolds emerged from the stadium he built today with the news fans were waiting for. He'd reached an agreement with the new owners, the Sterling Consortium, and the company voluntary arrangement had been passed, meaning Darlington Football Club will survive. We've came out of this very, very badly in respect is we've lost about everything. We've lost a stadium, we've lost the land down at Feetham's, we've lost an awful lot. And the position is, uh, we have got to recruit that money somewhere, and the only hope we can recruit that is from certain individuals, and that's what we intend to do. The new owners and the former chairman agreed to keep the terms of their agreement confidential, although the administrator did concede that the offer to creditors was a long way off the amounts originally invested. It's fair to say that there were some creditors not happy with the situation, um, and it's fair to say that if I was one of those creditors, I would probably agree with them. The, the dividend, as far as the voluntary arrangement is concerned, is less than one pence in the pound. It's subject to how much the claims are submitted for, but on paper it will be around one pence in the pound, maybe less. On the field, David Hodgson can now look forward to the new season with optimism, but not everybody will be happy. The decision to approve the agreement was far from unanimous, and creditors will undoubtedly lose out. So, football will continue here. This whole affair is certain to leave a bitter taste in many mouths, but Darlington Football Club is safe for now. Andy Kerr, North East tonight at the former Reynolds Arena.